Good evening, everyone, from Grace Fellowship in Christ Jesus, our Bible study, our Thursday night Bible study. Uh, I should say our weekly uh, Bible study. Uh, tonight, um, we're going to talk about the supernatural. You know, we, we, we again, we're, the real us is what's inside our body, our spirit man. You know, it, it goes back to when Jesus was saying, this is how you worship the Father in spirit and in truth, because he's spirit. And if we could get revelation about how to operate in the supernatural, you know, how to operate beyond the natural. And that's really where we're called to do as believers. We're to operate um, with authority and power that Jesus says we have been given to us as believers. And, you know, when you think about Christ being raised from the dead, it was the Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead. You know, and the word of God goes out. Remember, when we speak the word, it says the word goes out. God's word goes out and it accomplishes its purpose. So when I send the word out and say, be healed, and you respond to it and believe it, you receive it, and it happens. And it's happening by the spirit, right? Because the natural body is dying daily. You know, it's the older we get, it's really, it's dying. Yeah, it's fading. And so tonight we're going to talk about the supernatural. And I believe, you know, like I said several weeks ago, I believe after so many weeks of us coming together in our uh, faith school, is what we're calling it, our weekly Bible study faith school, I believe we're going to get revelation and we're going to begin to operate like Jesus did when he was on this earth. Because he told us for those who believe that we shall do the same things that he did and even greater and and you know and the body of Christ the believers need to really begin to shine um, you know Jesus that we need to see miracles we need to see signs and wonders that you know it's said that the the uh, miracles are for the non-believers so that they'll believe and when you read scripture all the time Times you see miracles, mostly they're people that are not believers, but they begin to begin to believe in Jesus because they have experienced a miracle. So it's really important that we see miracles and operate in the supernatural. And, you know, one of the things I was looking it up, what does supernatural mean? Supernatural means things that cannot be explained by science existing or occurring outside the normal ex, uh, experience or knowledge of man, not explainable by the known forces of laws. So supernatural, again, it's an operation beyond the natural. And that's where faith really steps in. You know, we, we really walk in a lot, most of our lives is walking by faith, right? Because we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know um, sometimes, how am I going to make it? How am I going to receive that? Well, by faith. We receive salvation by faith, right? And so we receive healing by faith. We receive breakthrough by faith. It's all by faith. But it's a supernatural, right? It's in the supernatural. It's not in the natural. Our body, again, you know, and our, even the way we think, our mind is thinking, I, you know, I'm not going to make it. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, you know, it's all negative. But with the spirit man, it really is a negative. It's really, uh, in a sense, positive because the spirit man, remember, we're, it's a new, we're new creatures in Christ Jesus when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So the new you, you're born again, you've come alive through accepting Christ. So the spirit man, remember it says in the Bible, the spirit man's willing, but the flesh is weak, right? Our flesh wants what the flesh wants, right? But the spirit man wants what Jesus wants us to have. And there's a battle all the time going on with our spirit man and our flesh. And the, you know, the flesh is the, it's the, uh, the mind, will, and emotion. That's the soul, so to speak. But the spirit man is, you know, the Holy Spirit is living in us, and he's speaking to our spirit the things of Jesus. So now the Holy Spirit lives in us. Our spirit lives in us. 
and the Holy Spirit and our spirit are communion, communing, so to speak. And so the Holy Spirit, remember, his job is to remind us of what Jesus says in his word. Amen? And so the supernatural is, um, it's outside the natural laws. And that's why we have to, you know, look beyond um, the natural. You know, the doctor said this, and my body says this, but the Bible says that, right? And so, so I need to believe the word of God over what I see with my eyes and what I hear with my ears or what somebody may tell me, even the doctor. Thank God for the doctors, but Jesus is the healer, right? He's the ultimate healer. And so let's go to Ezekiel. We're going to start there. Go ahead. I got a complaint. Go, Ken. Uh, knowing that the spirit is in us once we you know turn our circle over to God right and believe him in him uh, in all in general mm -hmm. I, guess I would say who trumps the heart or the mind well it's up to you I mean what are you going to give the I mean, what are you going to allow to operate? Are you going to allow your spirit man to be in charge? Are you going to let your mind, that's your mind, will, and your emotion, your soul, it's going to be the spirit and the soul is going to battle. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotion. And so your will, you know, even Jesus going to the cross, remember he takes the cup and he says, you know, if you can take this from me, Father, you could take it. But nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. So that's why it's important to build up our spirit man through the word of God instead of the flesh. They're warring. It's what you're feeding it. Whatever you're feeding the most is going to become the strongest. And does that make sense? What I'm say is this, so the spirit is through your heart. Yeah, yeah, the spirit. Right. Yeah, I mean, the spirit is what is speaking to your spirit. The Holy Spirit speaking right. to your spirit. Right. And so, you know, he's going to tell you that, hey, Mondo, you're going to, everything's going to be fine. And then you say, you know what? I'm going to believe what the spirit of God is telling me over my mind. Because my mind's telling me, you know what? I'm not going to pass. Oh, I'm not, I'm going to lose this. I'm going to, this and that. That's the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the soul going, mind, will, and emotions. They're saying, you're never going to make it. But the spirit man, the new you, the born again you, is saying, it's going to be, it's going to be all right. God's got us. He's got our back. He's going to show us the way. You put my I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. My spirit man is saying, put your trust in the Lord. So once you feel it in your heart, mm. it trumps the mind. Yeah, once you start focusing more on the things of God and the spirit, your spirit man, then what, you, now you have to understand your soul is always going to try to rise up. You know, it doesn't go away because you got to, your spirit is born again. Your soul, remember, mind, will, and emotion is always going to try to raise itself up to be in control. But that's why you got to get your spirit man full of the word of God so that your spirit man will take charge over your soul. Because we all go through it. And I know for me, if I don't spend enough time in the word of God, what happens is my soul starts rising up. My emotions start rising up. I begin to operate in fear. I become, you know, irritable. You know, I begin to act in, in the natural instead of the supernatural. It's all the mind. Yep. The mind is trying to take charge. That's part of the soul. What were you going to say, Tony? Uh, I remember years ago when I had a family member that really religious and just condemning everybody. You know? And so uh, this person came to me one day and said, uh, you know, God doesn't love you because of this and that and, and you're this and you're that. And all of a sudden these words came to my mind and it was so powerful and it came out of my mouth. So this person, well, if God doesn't love why do I worship him? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, if you didn't love me, why do I worship him? Yeah, 
<laughs> because I didn't go to, to church for for ten years. Fell down the bottom of a whiskey bottle because I heard somebody say that before, but I didn't know because I didn't know. But then when I got involved and started to seek him and everything, and then this person comes along and says that to me, then I had a defense because it was already in me. Yeah. Well, why do I worship him? I can't explain that. Yeah. And then it goes back to our battle isn't against flesh and blood. We're not fighting with other people. Sometimes the battle is going on within ourselves. Yeah. And I just have to surrender. Yeah. And that, that's a good point. Is that, Remember that one who has the spirit of God in them can't turn around and curse Jesus. You know, you, you're going to, you're going to, so the spirit of God, now there's times that you're going to be, maybe you get upset and you say something you shouldn't have said, or maybe you get mad at God, but God looks past that. He knows your heart and he knows, remember Jesus is seated, seated at the right hand of the father interceding he understands because jesus came to this earth and it says he was tempted like we are tempted he didn't sin but he can say father i understand what they're going through i understand how emotions get involved and they say stuff that they shouldn't say father don't hold that against them because i understand how they're tempted and how satan uh, affects them and so, well, let's go into Ezekiel 37, and we're talking about the supernatural. I want to just say hi to Tammy's on tonight, Diane's on tonight, uh, Donald, you're here tonight. God bless you all. Are you guys ready for the word of the Lord tonight? Maybe some other people have tuned in. Um, you know, just know that uh, welcome, welcome. And let's get caught up in the spirit tonight as we talk uh, about God's word. Well, we're going to talk about Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. And I want you to let the Word, the Holy Spirit, speak to you through his, God's Word as we read it. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, this is Ezekiel speaking, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. I saw uh, a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. So the Lord is asking Ezekiel, can these dry bones that you see, can they live? And Ezekiel says, oh, Lord, only you know. And so what Ezekiel's doing is the Lord's get, uh, questioning him, the Lord is setting him up for uh, a breakthrough. He's setting him up to use him for his, the Lord's glory. And so he's asking Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, well, Lord, only you know. I'm, I'm trusting that you have the answer, Lord. Ooh, that's a word right there. Lord, I'm trusting that you have my answer. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. You're going through something. You're believing God for something. And people are telling you what you need to do or what you don't need to do. But, Lord, I'm trusting you for the answer. You are the answer, but you have the answer that I need, that you need. And so that's what Ezekiel is doing. He's saying, Lord, you have the answer. And look what happens when he realized that the Lord has the answer. And then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, and prophesying is that you're going to speak on behalf of God. God is giving you a word to say through your mouth, because that's what's about to happen with Ezekiel. The Lord is giving him instructions what to say. And remember, there's power in words. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. You're saying the wrong things. You're declaring the wrong things. Prophesying, he's telling him to prophesy. And what he's telling him to say, I'm going to give you the words to speak out of your mouth. And when you say these words, they are going to be effective. They're going to change the circumstance. They're going to change your situation. Well, wait a second. The doctor said this. But the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to prophesy over your body. I'm going to cause you to prophesy over your situation and your circumstance. I'm going to give you the words to say. See, that's why we need to, that's why we pray, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me the words to say, because when you speak what the Lord tells you to speak, 
there's going to be power in those words, right? Remember, we go back to where the word of God says that my word will go out and will not return to me without accomplishing its purpose, right? So his word goes out, his word, I speak his word, and his word is effective, um, uh, you know, on behalf of him towards my situation. So he says to him in verse four, and then he said to me, this is the Ezekiel saying, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Here, where he's given us instruction. Hear the word of the Lord. You speak to your situation and say, whatever the situation, hear the word of the Lord. And the Lord begins to give you the words to say, right? And that that situation needs to hear the, word of the words of the Lord. And it says, this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh uh, come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So he's telling him what to say to these dry bones. And remember, we're talking about supernatural. So we're, you know, what you're seeing when you, when I'm, you know, when you read this and when it's spoken out, you're looking at a valley, a bunch of dry bones, aren't you? You see bones. You see this big valley of dry bones. And they're probably white because you take that as what you've seen on television, whether it's cartoons, whether it's shows, uh, CSI or whatever it is, you picture these bones of being white and dry, and there's a lot of them just laying around. That's what you picture, right? Because he's giving us um, a picture of, of a bunch of dry bones. And so the Lord is saying to Ezekiel, I want you to look past the dry bones, and I want you to speak to these bones, and this is what's going to happen as you speak to these bones. You're going to prophesy to those bones. Again, the same for whoever's listening to me right now. You have the power of the word in your mouth. What are you doing with the word of God? Speaking it out. Now, you're going to speak what God says, or you're going to speak what the devil says, or you're going to speak what your lack of faith says, right? There's really three people involved here in your life. You can listen to the word of the Lord, you can listen to the devil, or you can listen to yourself. Because you and I have been given a free will. And so, you know what we have to, you know, nevertheless, Jesus says, not my will be done, Father, but yours be done. You know, he's asking, take this cup away from me. But he says, nevertheless, my, my will be done, but your will be done. So let's go on a little bit farther here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then it says, then you will know that, that I am the Lord. You know what? We need to show the world who the Lord is. And how we're going to show the world the, who the Lord is, is that we got to know who the Lord is. We need to know that his word is true, that we have to believe his word, that what he says will happen in our lives. You know, just because the apostles all passed away one day didn't mean that miracles and signs and wonders passed away with them. Some people think that because the apostles are no longer on this earth. Well, God raised up other apostles. That's not all the apostles. There's apostles right now operating in, in this earth. And, but the point of it is, the Bible says God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it goes even in the New Testament. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What Jesus did back then, he'll do today. But it's up to us to believe. We go back to the spirit man or the soul. The soul believes in what it sees. The spirit man believes in what Jesus says. So here, so he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise. He began to hear a noise. He began to sense, the evidence began to appear. He heard first the noise. So as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, uh, and the bones came together, bone to bone. It starts somewhere, doesn't it? The body didn't appear the bones started coming together first. Your situation may not have uh, completely appeared, but God is beginning to reveal bits and parts of your breakthrough and your blessing. You know, you're waiting 
waiting for. Some people say, I'm expecting a big old miracle. Well, so God is a God of miracles, right? And big miracles. But appreciate the small miracles. Because small miracles lead to big miracles. But a lot of times we're so busy looking for that big miracle, we overlook the little miracles. And that little miracle can bring glory to God and praise to God. And we can share it with somebody and say, man, look what the Lord did. And it can build their faith and cause a miracle to happen in their life or cause them to believe in Jesus. You know, if they don't believe in him yet, but believe in this miracle so that you will believe in Jesus. And I've said this over and over. It is so important that we break through. It is so important we get our healing and our breakthrough and all these things so other people will see it and believe in Jesus. And, you know, I think last week we were talking about that we are citizens. The scripture even says we are citizens of heaven. Our citizenship is heaven. You know, as a believer, we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So now we're born again. We're born into the kingdom of God. And our citizenship is heaven. So if our citizenship is heaven, that means we're going home to be with the Lord in heaven. And so while we're here we need to fulfill our purpose as being ambassadors of Christ on this earth so more people will make a, have a residence in a citizenship in heaven and stuff. And again, you know, I was talking a little bit about this last night. And, you know, you know the but scripture talks about that, that he desires that not one person shall perish, even the worst of worst. Even somebody who is just in a, and I know everybody, I'm not, you know, I'm not here condoling what somebody does, whether they're a murderer or mass shooter or this or that. But you know what? If they turn to the Lord, he is just to forgive them and they will be in heaven one day. And the re and people say, well, you know, well, how can that be? Because the word of God says, Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. And I want to just remind us again, eternity is forever. Eternity doesn't just happen and stop. I don't want anybody to go to hell. My worst enemy, I don't want to go to hell because it will be forever and ever and ever. Jesus is not going to show up in, have, in hell and cause people to have a change of heart. He's given us the opportunity on this earth to accept him or not. And it's the easiest thing to do. Now, the walk isn't as easy as it is. You know, some people go, well, this, this Christian stuff is easy. No, it ain't. I'm going to be honest with you. Because the devil will fight you all the way. But, you know, again, eternity is forever. And for somebody to spend eternity in hell where there'll be no hope and forever and ever and ever and ever, we don't want anybody to spend in, in hell. But what I was saying is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior is the easiest thing. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. That's when the journey begins. That's the beginning of the journey. And we're on our journey. We're going to have ups. We're going to have downs. So we're going to have good. We're going to have bad. We're going to feel like we're saved. Some days we're going to not feel like we're saved. But we are saved. But to invite somebody to Christ, and whether they accept it or not, is up to them. But we are citizens of heaven. We're representatives of Jesus. So we need to represent Jesus on this earth by, with the invitation of accepting him. Now, again, they may not accept it the first time, but down the road, they may accept him. And what we do is we plant seed and we water it with faith. So keeping that in mind, let's go on. Um, praise Jesus. I just want to, you know, as bad as people are, and as much as people get on our nerves, Everybody can probably, and I'm hearing people seeing everybody, amen. <laughs> you know, there's going to be people, you're, they're going to be hard to love. They're going to be, you love the unlovable. But nevertheless, I don't know about y'all, I'm grateful that I got my butt saved, <laughs> so to speak. Because I'll tell you, back then, you know, I probably wasn't the, the sweetest person, you know. 
I had my good days and my bad days. I still have my good days and bad days. But you know what? It was by grace that I'm saved. And who am I to judge that anybody else doesn't get saved when I got saved, right? So let's go on. Uh, so, so anyway, so he said in verse 7 again, So I, was, I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and uh, I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Remember, it's a process. The bones were coming together, the skin was coming on the bones, but there was no breath. And how many believers stop right before their complete breakthrough? Oh, I'm good right now. Well, don't just settle for just good. I want you to, let's go all the way. When God has promised us, let's not settle for second best. Let's continue to believe for completion. And then he says uh, in verse 9, Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So God is giving Ezekiel instruction in what to do with these dry bones. And remember, you know, the Lord asked him, Can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, Only you know, Lord. And the Lord began to give him instruction. To what to say, and things were happening. So in verse 10, it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded, or as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Now, you have to understand, God is painting, the picture is becoming more clear of what is actually happening here. Just stay with me. Um, so he said, a vast army, in verse 11, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So the Lord is speaking to uh, Ezekiel. He's showing him bones, but these bones actually represent people. I mean, bones do anyway, but God is saying to him, he's opening his eyes to see what he's actually prophesying to. And he's prophesying to the people of Israel because, let's read it here, it says, there, um, then, uh, let me see. This is what the servant Lord, oh my, uh, da, da, da. okay. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. They were hopeless. How many people out in the world today are hopeless? How many people listening to me right now feel hopeless? You're dead men walking. You're doing all the rituals. You're saying all the right things. You're feel, you know, you're you're doing what other Christians do. You do what other people do. You do what other people think you should do. But there's really no life in you. You feel hopeless. You feel cut off. Well, what is happening here is the Lord is giving Ezekiel instruction to prophesy over the people of Israel, and then he says here, they say. Um, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I'm going to open up, uh, open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. So what he's saying, he's saying, prophesy to the people. They feel this. You know, this is what we could be doing right now in our nation. This is what we could be doing in our communities. This is what we could be doing in our family. Stop calling your children worthless and hopeless and this and that. You're prophesying death over them or whatever. You know, it, we're, there's so much talking going on nowadays. We listen to the news 24-7, all this stuff. People are repeating what they hear, and they're not prophesying the word of the Lord. They're prophesying what the devil wants them to prophesy, Right? And so we need to speak the word of God to change the situations and circumstances. You can speak to your, prophesy over your situation and circumstance or whatever it is. You have been given authority and power over all the powers of the enemy. Jesus said this to the disciples, and nothing shall harm you. You and I have been created in God's image and his likeness. 
We have been given the, you know, we're supposed to be acting like God. And how do we do? He said, be light. And there was light. God speaks things into existence. You and I are supposed to be speaking things into existence. Remember, he created from what was invisible. He brought from what was invisible to visible. We talked about this last week. That's the supernatural. It's beyond the natural. It's beyond what you see. It's beyond what you feel. It's beyond what you taste. It's in the spirit realm, mm -hmm. and you need to bring it out of the spirit realm into the natural. That's what Ezekiel was doing. He was prophesying. He was operating in the supernatural. It went beyond the natural. And Diane, I just feel like this is a big word for you that the Lord is telling you to prophesy over your body, prophesy um, life into your ministry, whatever it is, because we're, we're operating in the supernatural, right? And that's where God wants us to be. But we have a tendency to stay in the natural instead of operating in the supernatural. Amen? So let me read the rest of this. It says then uh, in verse 12, it says, Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. It's the Lord who d does it, but we are in his ambassador. We're his representative. We're his mouth. You know, we are his voice. His voice speaks through us if we let his voice speak through us. And can you imagine the changes that can take place? And we have to get out of our mind. You were talking a little bit about your mind a minute ago. Remember, the soul is the mind, will, and emotion. They always snag us because we'll say, I don't feel saved. Well, it doesn't have anything to do how you feel. You got saved because you believed in your heart and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Has nothing to do with your feelings. I don't feel holy today. Doesn't have a thing to do with it. You know what? I probably shouldn't receive communion because I was a bad person this way. You don't accept communion because you're good or bad. You accept communion in remembrance of what Jesus did for you and I. Because if we're not, not careful, we're going to get into works. We're going to get into what I can do. Instead of, and here, it's right here, at the end of this, after what Ezekiel did in honoring the Lord and speaking on behalf of the Lord, here's what the Lord says. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I, and he's speaking to the people of Israel. I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. The Lord has spoken it. He's given us the word and he did it. He's doing Doing what you need done because you're speaking his word. Isn't that amazing? He gives us the, number one, he dies on the cross for us. He takes our sins upon him. Our sins are forgiven. Our curse, the curse is broken. He dies for us. He gives us his, he gives his life on our behalf. He, he gives us salvation. He fills us with his spirit. He heals our body. He provides for us. He supplies for us. He does it all for us. All we have to do is believe in him and speak it out and follow his instruction and see the, the evidence of his word working on our behalf. Believe his word. Well, I'm healed. I don't feel healed. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Diana, yes, we just speak life over your body in your situation. And we just believe in here as we are uh, testifying of the supernatural that God will do something for you. And we believe that. Uh, I remember, uh, I never witnessed, uh, we're talking about supernatural. Mm -hmm. I have never really witnessed a, a supernatural event. Uh, you know, not to degree that, you know, miracles and you know, stuff like that. But, um, I, I witnessed something that was so supernatural. Okay. And it's probably the number one thing in my life that I, that I witnessed. Mm. And, and, and what it was, it was, it was, it was a Jesus movie. It was Easter season, all of us. And, and, and he was in the temple and he was preaching. And uh, he told the, the, the guy that was uh, crippled, 
and told him, you know, I'm doing it for God to rule me, you know, just believe it, all that. You just believe God could bring this miracle to you. And it was like a thousand words. I mean, I was, I mean, I was blown away. I mean, it, it totally astonished me, even though it was in TV. But I mean, to witness that, anyway, uh, Jesus told him if you would just believe. Man. And he was see the, the salvation of God. And of course, he was healed. But that was so powerful to see that. I don't know if it's it it the Easter season or, or just my spirit was such a lot. But to see that, it just blew me away. Uh -huh. It was just like it, it, it was real. You know, to witness that. Sure. You know, I never witnessed that, but I saw it on TV. It was like, man, I couldn't believe it. Awesome. And you know, you have to be open. The Holy Spirit can move through anything. And I, I can go to a secular movie and watch it and be ministered to. I can get a, um, you know, a, a, a story out of it, a biblical story. Or, you know, I can get a message out of it. It's how you open yourself up for the Spirit to speak to you. You know, whether you're watching a Jesus movie or, you know, what you saw a little child singing a song and it just really touched you. Or, you know, they made a statement or something like that. You're just opening yourself for the Holy Spirit to, to touch your spirit. Supernatural. Remember, it's beyond the natural. You know, it's beyond in what you can do. It is what God can do that we're believing for him that he's doing. Right? So go to John chapter 11. We're going to talk about Lazarus for a minute. Hallelujah. We're talking about supernatural. And you know, what's interesting, God tells the Israelites, he says, I'm going to put my spirit in you, and then I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to put you in the land. So go ahead. Can I say something real yeah. quick before we move over to John? Uh -huh. uh, here in, in Ezekiel 37, uh, verse 5, he says, This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. When, when I read that, when you read that, it took me to Genesis uh -huh. when God created Adam. And it says here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, The Lord God formed the man from the dust and the, the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Amen. So it just reminds me of that. Yeah. Life. And it, yeah, and God spoke, breathed into Adam life. The, you're right. And isn't it interesting, Ezekiel, God is using what he did to Adam yep. to do the same for the, the Israelites, yes. the army. They raised up as a vast army, mm -hmm. you know, and God's raising up his army right now. And you know what? It doesn't matter what the devil does. It, what matters is what the believer does. Mm -hmm. Because we can override what the devil does by the power of the word of God being spoken. I, uh, he was talking about, you know, witnessing miracles. And the reason I, I, you know, I've always had faith in God and I've tried, I go to church since I was young. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've witnessed to one among that happened to me and then her brothers here a while back mm -hmm. when the doctor said they were done there was oh, nothing yes, they could do yes. for her brother it was just a matter of time mm -hmm. and they were ready to withdraw and the next day uh they didn't know the doctor said well something changed wow he's he's breathing better he's he's, he's started to react and, and this and that and then the next day, it got better and better and better, and now he's jogging with his wife. And doing what he wants to do. <laughs> That's you know? supernatural. Yeah, I mean, but the doctors had done were done with. Him. They told her, they told her, his wife, they told everybody they were they were going to withdraw, disconnect the machine that day. Wow. And she, yeah, she said no. She goes, "You're not doing it today." Mm. And then all this took place. Wow. And in my case, uh. uh this was back in seven, 1977. We were at a, at, a, uh, at a 4th of July party, me and a bunch of friends, kids, and, you know, wives and all. And, and we were at the in LaGrange by the river. Anyway, uh, 
I had a 35 millimeter camera and they were, you know, the water's just knee deep running mm. through there all day. And they were all playing around and I've got to climb up on a tree taking pictures. Had a beard in my hand. <laughs> well, a gust of wind came and it shook the whole tree. Oh my, and down I came. And I, <laughs> I couldn't fall in the water. I fell right there by the bank where the uh, big boulder I right know. And they came in the ambulance and picked me up from there and took me all the way to Houston to the hospital. And uh, 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 the next, I woke up the next day and there were doctors around and stuff. He goes, how are you? Are you feeling any pain? I said, no. He goes, well, we we did some medication on you. And mm. He goes, but uh, you, you, you had a real bad fall. Wow. He says, did you feel anything on the way over here after you got here I said not really said, well I poked your feet your toes your knees and your legs wow. and you wouldn't even wow nothing so he says uh we don't know we'll find out here in a few days he goes but you, you didn't get any of that feeling he goes we may have sad news that you won't walk again oh wow so uh, uh you know, I, I just, my mother came over there and prayed with me and my sisters and my brothers and stuff. But with God's, you know, answered prayers, uh, I went through all, all that and they made me a custom brace from my back. I wore that for a year. Then I had to go to therapy two years. But then after that, I played uh, Mexican American fastball wow. for 13 years, and here I am today. Wow. God wow. healed him. Yeah. Praise God. I mean, what he can do for you, he can do, you know, what he so did for I him. I believe in the miracles from God. Amen. That is a miracle. Yeah. Can you just say something real quick about the mom and brother? Mm -hmm. um, one day uh, we were taking communion, and Yolanda said, I've ever did this. And I said, I'm going to take communion for my brother. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. She took communion for on behalf of her brother for many times, and her brother is now doing very well. Three months. She for three months. Praise God. Amen. See, you can inter intercede for people. You can stand in the gap for people that need that. Well, let's go to John 11 real quick. And uh, verse 1, it says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. So what is Jesus doing? He's speaking words of faith, isn't he? He, he know, you know, he's speaking words of faith. He's telling the disciples, this is not going to end in death. And then Jesus uh, uh, says in verse 5, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Well, wait a second. He he loves Lazarus, and he doesn't run to, uh, you know, right away. He waits. And then it says, Then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, A short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you're going back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? A man who walks in. I'm going to skip over that. In verse 11, After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus, has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. These are words of faith, aren't they? He's speaking words of faith. The same with you. Whatever you're going through right now, be careful what you say. The devil wants you to speak death, but you speak life. Hey, I might be going through something right now, but it's going to get better. Or all is well, like the Shunammite woman says. If you don't want to say anything you shouldn't say, just say all is well. That's words of faith, right? Mm -hmm. And so then it goes on. Um, it says, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. 
Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural uh, sleep. So then, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe. See what he's saying? You could say those words are pretty harsh, aren't you? But see, you're not seeing the whole picture yet. Whatever your situation is right now, you know what? It's an opportunity for the Lord to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks really bad. It looks dead. Your dream's dead or whatever it is. It looks so bad that no human can affect it. That's in the natural. But the supernatural, Jesus can affect it. His word can affect it. It goes beyond the natural of what you can do in your power. Now it's up to the power of the Lord to affect it. And he's saying, I'm glad I wasn't there. Uh, I'm glad I wasn't there. So you may believe. So let's go to him. Then Thomas uh, said to the, the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. There's always the ones, you know, the murmuring player. Yeah, let's go, you guys. I bet you we're going to die too. You know what? They're going to beat us up too. And Oh, Thomas, <laughs> just be quiet. Let's go on. And then it goes on. On the arrival, Jesus found uh, that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. Just two miles. I can walk in two miles in, what, maybe an hour at the most? And Jesus waited until he died, and then he comes on the scene, and he's been in the tomb for four days. I mean, he's waiting until it's good and dead. <laughs> maybe your situation, you know, maybe the Lord is waiting for your situation to be good as dead. Again, so it takes you out of the equation of uh, taking the credit for it. So here he's good as dead for four days. And then it says, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. She still has faith in Jesus. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know uh, he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So it tells you that she had listened to Jesus speak on the resurrection and then what happens in the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, you don't have to wait until uh, the last day. He says, I am the resurrection in life. The same for those of you right now listening. He is the resurrection in life now. He is the resurrection in life in you and in your situation. He's able to raise your dead thing up, your dead dream, your dead uh, whatever it is, he's able to cause it to rise to life because he's the resurrection and life. And then he's, it says, he who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. She's saying that by the Spirit. She knew Jesus. And she sat under Jesus, but it's only the Spirit of God that reveals who Jesus is. And so, Mar so uh, Martha, right now, she's making a declaration of who Jesus is. And it, it's a supernatural thing. That's even a supernatural thing. For you to even acknowledge Jesus, that's a supernatural thing. Because you don't see him with your eyes. You don't feel him. You know, you believe it's by faith. That he even went to the cross. You weren't there at the cross. You weren't there when he rose from the dead. But it's by faith. It's his spirit that's revealing those things to us so that we'll believe. Right? You don't have to convince me that he rose from the dead. I believe he rose from the dead. You don't have to convince me I'm saved because I did what the word of God said. I confess he's, you know, the son of God. I confess and I believe in my heart. Nobody can take my salvation away. Nobody can take your salvation away. You can't lose your salvation. You cannot lose your salvation 
I want somebody to hear that. You cannot lose your salvation, no matter what you did. When you accepted Jesus, remember I talked about this on Sunday, you received the Holy Spirit as the seal of approval. That's your seal of confirmation that you are saved. You have the Spirit. Like you said, Tony, when people said all those things and you said, you know what, if I'm not saved, why do I worship Jesus? I do it because the Holy Spirit lives in me. That is evidence I'm saved. So don't listen to what people say where, where they try to talk you out of things. Well, healing isn't for today. Well, it is, sure, it's for today. And I'm believing in my healing. Well, prosperity isn't for today. Yeah, it is. I, I don't think poverty in, in is not holiness. I mean, how can you be a blessing if you don't have anything, right? So don't let people talk you into what the Word of God isn't saying. It's supernatural. I believe before I receive right? Let's go on. I know we're kind of getting, praise the Lord, right? Hallelujah. It says, um, it says she, so she says, yes, Lord, she's told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. And uh, now Jesus, Jesus had not entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. They were thinking all bad stuff, weren't they? You know, there's people that are caught up in yeah. negative and mourning and, and, yeah. and stuff. You know, people, there's people who live. There are people, I know that they love to tell bad news. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they will yeah. they will beat somebody to your house so they can be the first one to tell you yeah. bad news. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. They they thrive oh, on telling true. bad news, right? But we know the good news, right? Yeah. And so going on, it says, When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and trouble. So, and so you have to understand too, you know, there's different teachings on this. Some say he was upset because they didn't believe, their lack of belief, or he was upset because he was affected by how they were affected. You know what? Jesus is affected by how you're affected. When you're down and out, Jesus is affected by that. You're his... You know, you're joining, you're the children of God. Why wouldn't he be concerned about what you're going through? Because remember, before he came on this earth, he can relate to what we go through because he went through it. He experienced it. So let's go on a, a little bit further. So it says, um, it says, where have you laid him? He asked, come and see Lord, they replied. So there's, he's asking where the tomb is. And remember, they, the Jews were following Mary because they thought she was going to the tomb to mourn. You know, she was going to mourn. And so Jesus says, where did you lay him? Where is the tomb? And he says, come and see, Lord, they replied. And then it, this, it, Jesus, it says, Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? And let's go on. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, uh, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. Remember what he told the disciples a few minutes, you know, a little bit ago. I'm glad I didn't show up so that you will believe. And he's about to reveal to them so they'll re believe. And I believe somebody's going to get this tonight. The Lord is revealing to you that he is. He's revealing to you about a resurrection that's about to take place in your situation. And what is he saying to them? Remove the stone. He said, take away the stone, because I want you to see what I'm about to do. I want you to see. The Lord is, right now, I believe the Lord is saying, remove the stone. Some of you, your hearts become hardened because you have believed God for something for so long, and so your heart has become hardened, and now you don't even believe anymore. You don't care anymore. 
you, you know, you just, you don't. And your hearts become hardened. And the Lord is saying to us tonight, remove the stone. Because what it's doing, it's hindering you from receiving your blessing, your breakthrough, or your resurrection. And that's what he's telling them. Remove the stone, he said. But the Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. See, they're caught up in the natural, right? Jesus is about to perform a supernatural situation. He's about to change the natural into a supernatural. So he tells him, remove the stone. And he says, and then Martha says, there's a bad odor. Jesus isn't concerned about the odor. Maybe your situation right now really stinks. Maybe your attitude really stinks. Do you ever have bad attitude days? I do. <laughs> today, you had one of those today? Well, you know, we could say, Raymond, your attitude really stinks. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. She knows she wants to say <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord See? isn't concerned about your stinky attitude. He's not concerned about Lazarus stinking. He had a, he had a plan. He had something he needed to accomplish. And the same for those listening right now. God is up to something. He didn't care how it stinks. It doesn't care how bad it is. He's going to perform a miracle in your situation, a supernatural. Then he said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? The Lord is saying to us tonight, didn't I tell you, Raymond? <laughs> didn't I tell you, Yolanda? Didn't I tell you, Armando? Didn't I tell you, Bernadette? Didn't I tell you, who are those listening, Jackie, uh, Virginia, uh, all the ones listening tonight, did I not tell you, Dante? Did I not tell you, Roland? Did I not tell you that if you believe, let me say, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Tonight, God is about to show his glory in your situation right now. It is about to change. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Tammy, your situation is about to change. He says, they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. That's why I pray. That's why I lay hands on the sick. That's why I encourage people. That's why I share my testimony. So that as they hear it of how good the Lord is, what it does, it causes their faith to come up. It causes their faith to be built. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. What did Jesus say? I pray to you, Father. I know you always hear me, but it's for their benefit that they hear how, what I say. So then it goes on. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. Woo! He's been in there for four days. He stinks. He's already decaying. If he's stinking, he's already decaying in the natural. But the supernatural, what did Jesus say? Come out. He spoke it out. Lazarus, come out. Mm -hmm. And so it said, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. So he's showing the evidence of him being prepared for burial. He's still in his burial clothes. Some people right now, you've been in your burial clothes for so long, and they stink. <laughs> you stink so bad because you have just died to instead of believe in the Lord for your breakthrough or your miracle. And it says, so he was wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face, Face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Somebody needs to hear this thing. Take off your grave clothes. Jesus has already healed you. Jesus has already ca caused a breakthrough. You may not see it yet, but you know what? you got to take off the grave clothes. You're living in the past. You're living as dead. You're, you're not believing his word. Just because your situation is one way doesn't mean he cannot change it. And I believe tonight the Lord is changing our circumstances and our situation. Can you say amen? amen. Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what Jesus did and put their faith 
in him. That's why you need your breakthrough. That's why you need your miracle. That's why you need a financial uh, breakthrough or whatever it is so people can see what you have gone through and what the Lord has done in your life. Let's do this and then we'll close because we're pretty much to the end. Um, you can look at your worksheet or Romans 3.3. 3. What if some were unfaithful? We talked about this tonight in prayer. Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true and every human being a liar. Everyone being a liar. Every man being a liar. Just because I'm not faithful all the time doesn't mean it's going to nullify the word of God. Right? Because what I'm doing is I'm putting my faith in me. You know, if like you're talking, Raymond, just because you had a bad day doesn't mean it's going to nullify the Lord from doing a miracle in your life. The same for everybody here. You're putting too much faith in what you're doing instead of faith in what Jesus will do. That's a, that's a good point because I have such a bad day today that I started putting faith in myself and, and the Spirit of those told me. Don't worry about it. I'm a covenant God. You're covered. Yeah. You know, that, that's what covenant is. It's that's right. Law. Thank you, Lord. For, you know, looking after my back. But, you know, you know, because I like to dwell on, you know, on mistakes or whatever bad day. But God says, I'll let that go. I'm a covenant God. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm not, my spirit is not going to depart from me. Yep. That's right. That's exactly it. So just because you're not feeling it, remember, that's the soul, mind, will, and emotion. But we live by the Spirit. And one last scripture, and then we'll close. In 1 Corinthians 2, 1, it says, And so it was me. This is Paul. It's one of my favorite scriptures. One of my favorite. You guys know my First Peter yeah. scripture, I always say. 1 Corinthians 2, 1. And this is Paul talking. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul was a very educated man. He was a Pharisee. He was very educated. And he's telling them, I decided to come to you with humbling myself, not as a scholar. I came as a humble servant to say, you know what, I'm not here to convince you or to manipulate you into believing the word of God. He says, I'm here to tell you the only thing I know is Christ and him crucified. But let's go on. In verse 3, I came to you in weakness and with great fear and trembling. Well, Paul was not a weak man, but he's saying, I humbled myself as a weak man. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. That's what our job on this earth is to be. We come with a demonstration of the power of God or the Spirit's power so that people's faith might not rest on us, but on God, the supernatural. I can't do anything in with my power but I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through the power of God. So I know we're kind of going over a little bit. So let's pray tonight. And then um, I believe we got something tonight. You believe that? Yeah. I want to uh, uh, say something. Okay. I spoke to my boss today. Uh -huh. or, or, cause I had been waiting on a call from him yesterday, but he was in Nebraska and he just got back yesterday evening. But anyway, uh, he asked me, he goes, well, Armando, he goes, what, uh, what do you think? Are you going to, you think you're going to get to this exam, this last exam? I said, well, I've been studying hard. I said, and I have my faith in God. I said, and I know that he's going to help me and he'll be there with me all that he can. I said, and I, I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you yes, but I'm not telling you no. Amen. He goes, well, he goes. I just want you to know, he goes, you've worked for me for 15 years and for this company. And Armando, I'm going to, I'm just going to say it straight out. He goes, how long have you been running Christ? I said, 47 years. He says, you just turned 72, right? I said, yes. He goes, well, he goes, I'm just saying, maybe it's a sign for you. He goes, but 
He goes, you go in there and do your best. If you don't do it, he goes, I'll, I'll stand by you. He goes, when I told you to come work for me in this company, because when you come to work for this company, we're a family. Amen. He goes, and as a family, he goes, if my son goes and takes a test and he doesn't pass it, I'm not going to throw him out of the house and tell him you're out of the family. Amen. He goes, so we'll have something for you to do. He goes, and uh, we'll, we'll, I will stand by you. Praise so, God. Yeah. Praise God. And, you know, that was, to me, was like a big relief because I heard it from the boss that hired 15 years ago and i've been working for him for 15 years wow all over the place wow so. praise god well let's pray heavenly father we thank you for the word thank you for the testimony that armanda yes. gave we thank you lord it's about building our faith faith yes. comes by hearing and hearing the word of god Amen. right now for every person tuned in every person that will tune in every person that uh, has heard the word of God tonight. I thank you that your faith has become stronger and stronger. Lord, right now, I plead the blood of Jesus over every person, over your home, over your family, over your jobs, over every situation. And I declare right now, I prophesy over your situation and circumstance that it is changing right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. amen. God bless you all. Share this with people. It's going to be on YouTube uh, probably tomorrow so that uh, people can subscribe and listen to it on YouTube. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. Excellent teaching. Okay. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. No.